it's a bit big for me on my own. I shouldn't worry about it. You're not even sure this disco thing's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen all right. You can bet your boots on that. I just think I'll have to farm out some of the work to somebody else. Well, I still think it's all a bit iffy. Ken Barlow will kill it stone dead if he can. I'm not worried about Ken Barlow. He's a great one for lost causes, is Ken. Well, before you get too involved in your wheeling and dealing, I'd just like to bear something in mind. Mavis and Nature Boy go off camping today. What do you want me to do about it? Tell them about the birds and the bees before they go. No. Anyway, Mavis won't believe you if you did. What I'd like you to do about it is bear in mind that while Mavis is away, I will not be doing the morning papers. I'll do them turn and turn about for you. Oh, hell! So now you know. See you. Ta-ra. Hey, up. You got a customer. A customer? You're joking. Morning. This is the lad I was telling you about, the one who keeps coming round here, borrowing my gear to do the little plumbing jobs around the house. He's got the cheek of the devil, hasn't he, eh? What do you want off me this time? Nothing. I've only come back to bring back the wrench I borrowed. How are things at your house? Any floods yet? No. Clever lad. Keep it up. Hurrah. Thanks for letting me use it. I couldn't manage without. It looks in reasonable condition to me. Hey, Mr. Fairclough. What? What do they call them things you use for making a tap stop dripping? A washer, a little rubber doo. No, no, blimey. I know what a washer is. This thing I'm talking about, right, it's like a grinder, and it can make a new seat for the tap to bed down into. Ah, you mean a reseating tool? Yeah, that'll be it. You know your stuff, don't you? You haven't got one, have you? All right, then. Yeah. Come on, Dad. Hang on a minute. Would you give me a package of mink cakes, please, love? Yes. You never say that explorers eat this, <laughs> I ought to buy myself a couple of packets. Why? You're not going exploring, are you, love? Well, in a modest sort of way. I'm uh, going cell walking with a friend. Oh. And we've been sleeping under canvas. Straight Thank up. You. you going camping? <laughs> it's my first time, too. <laughs> I expect you think I'm mad. Most people do. No, we don't, love. I mean, you're never too old to take it up. Or camping, either. Sure up, you. The adults are talking. Where are you going, love? To the lake. The lake's great. We used to go camping there when Brian was just a little lad. Remember that time in Abergelly? We woke up in the middle of the night with a cow in the tent. <laughs> a cow in the tent? It had more of the tent than we did, I can tell you. Oh. <laughs> you get a lot of rain in the lakes, you know, love. So what you want to do is dig a trench all the way around your tent for drainage. That way you'll not get flooded out, you see. Well, it never stopped us getting flooded out that time in Honourable Lake. That was different. It was a cloud burst. That's a good tip, is that, love, and I'll tell you another one as well. Make sure that you dig your latrine below your tent. Latrine? Yeah, you know what a latrine is, don't you, love? It's, uh... Yes, I know very well, thank you. Well, I wish I was going with you. I do, Lear. Come on, Dad. We've got work to do. Aye. Right. Sure, love. Have a nice time. Thank you. Hello, love. Sure. Hi. Oh, what's up with you? You've got that look on your face again. What look? Like you've been hit from behind with a bag of wet k -Li. Now, come on, summit's bothering you. Didn't fall out with Victor last night, oh, did you? No, of course not. How did you go on with your practice? Or in that tent? Oh, well, we, we got it organised eventually. I mean, it's quite simple, really, once you've got the hang of it. It's just... Well, it did seem so small for two people. Oh, that's what's worrying you. You and Vitamin Pack Victor in the same tent. Well, wouldn't it worry you? Well... Only if Len got to hear about it. So if you see clowns up on... Who the heck's that at this time? Oh, yeah. Take Snick off, love, and have a seat. Well, we're not open for another hour yet. <coughs> Hello. Thank you, Hilda. Morning, Betty. Hello, Hello. 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 Is, is Mrs Walker about? No, she's up there, Joan is. Mm. Again? Yeah. You might know. She uses this place like Windsor Castle and their Joan is like Sandringham. <laughs> Pity, pity. I wanted to have a word about this Stop the Disco campaign. Oh, how's it doing? Oh, we're doing rather well with the petition. Oh, There's a lot of very strong feeling against it. Mm. Uh, by the way, Betty, have I asked you to sign yet? Uh, no, I don't think you have, love, but uh, I'd rather not. I mean, well, it's nothing to do with me, really, you see. Oh. I live a bus ride away. Oh. Um, what about you, Bet? No, I'll leave it, love, if you don't mind. You're in favour of this disco, are you? No, Ken, to be honest with you, it doesn't much bother me either road, but, I mean, you've got to have them somewhere. Mm. Why not Rosamond mm. Street? I think you don't realise quite how much of a nuisance it's going to be. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I can't agree with you there. I mean, nothing personal and present company accepted, like, but, uh, well, I think a lot of folk what sign them petitions are just killed, yours. Oh, I don't think there's much joy as such involved in a disco wine bar, Mrs Ogden. Pleasure, perhaps, and a lot of inconvenience for the rest of us. No, 
I'm sorry, but I speak as I find. I can't see now wrong with folk having a bit of fun. You've changed your mind then, Hilda. Yeah. I was under the strong impression you were on our side. She was. Till Mike Baldwin said that there might be a, a bit of cleaning work when the disco started. He did not. A position was mentioned, but it's not cleaning. It's not go-go dancing either, is it, Hilda? The cloakroom was mentioned. Well, you have to bear that in mind, don't you? I mean, if it's providing jobs, well, not more important nowadays, is there? Oh, <laughs> yes. Funny sort of a name, Valentine. Hey, you're no relation to that spin bowler that used to be, eh? You know, the cricketer. There used to be a song about them. Them little pals of mine... Or Ramadin, Ramadin and Valentine. One, yeah. No, no relation. I'll tell you what, though. What? I'd sooner be called Valentine than Ramadin. <laughs> can just imagine the kids at school, can't you? Yeah, you can, can't you? It's more of a job than plumbing, though, isn't it? Playing cricket for your living. There's only your lot dish out any decent fast bowlers nowadays. When you say my lot, do you mean them who live in Clarence Street? Or do you mean them I went to Bessie Street School, yeah, generally? Yeah, no, do you know what I'm talking about? It's a fact, though, isn't it? Only the West Indians turn out decent fast bowlers nowadays. I mean, our lot of rubbish. It's got nothing to do with prejudice, you know. Although, I'm not prejudiced, you know, not at all. I didn't think you were. But to be dead honest, though, I am really a bit prejudiced about most things. Like Cockneys and fellows who wear sunglasses, I ask you. Sunglasses round here. Yorkshiremen. There's something about them and all. Hey, if you want to know about plumbing, shall I give you a tip? What's that? Get plenty of tea down here. That's the first rule of the job. Get to know the brewing capabilities of the lady of the house. I mean, make sure that you are out on the job before you do that, of course. But in here, the kettle goes on the hour, every hour. Can you make a cup of tea? Morning, Bessie. Hello. 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 Please, okay, love. Morning, Al. Hiya. Is it, uh, is it right what I've been hearing about you two? What's that? Well, somebody said that you were going on the uh, the local wireless, you know, debating this uh, disco scheme. No, it's not right. Oh, well, I stand corrected. Oh, I was game. I thought it was a good idea. But Alf didn't fancy it. Don't know why. Maybe he thinks it's not got a good case to argue. Nothing of the sort. Look, there's a very simple reason why I have no intention whatsoever of going on the wireless and it's this. It's nothing to do with me, one way or the other, whether that warehouse is made into a disco or not. It's up to the council. Well, you're a councillor. Yeah, one out of dozens. It's the whole council that has to make that decision. Well, you're the councillor for round here, though. Exactly. Very good point. Look, I'm getting a bit fed up with this. I came in here for a quiet drink, and all I'm getting is all this argument. Are you surprised? With feelings as strong as they are? <laughs> You said two sugars, didn't you? That's yours. You know, considering you're new at this, Lark, you haven't made a bad job of that. Well, I generally can, you know. If I've got the gear, you can't deny it without the tools, can you? You know those jobs you're doing around the house? What about them? Do you get paid much for them? Not really. I just do it for the family, you know. I don't reckon anybody else would trust me. I mean, look at you. You'd reckon I'd be starting floods at our house. You're dead right and all. I'll tell you something else. You don't make a bad cup of tea, either. Have you ever thought of taking this up as a career? How do you mean? I mean, why don't you come round here and start working for me? It's simple enough. I'm offering you a job. <laughs> Can you open the door, please? Oh. I was uh, worried about uh, overbalancing backwards down the stairs. I didn't want to be fumbling around with the door. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I'm oh, sorry. oh, I'm sorry. Um, do you, do you want any help? No, 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 no. It's just, it's quite simple, if, if you're methodical. No, 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 I can do it. Did you get your rucksack packed? It's just finished, but I'm in a bit of a struggle to get it fastened, though. My word, Mavis, you'll never get that up Scarfell Pike. What have you got in there? Oh, just the basics, like you said. Well, let's see. You seem to have a lot of clothes. I mean, the secret is to carry your clothes on you. Yes, well, I need something to change into, don't I? Well, yes, I know that, but... but what are these? Glad you didn't look at those, but it's other personal garments. Well, I mean, you can't take the entire contents of your wardrobe, Mavis. <sighs> oh, Mavis. Well, 
I get cold feet, especially at night. Well, you won't on this trip, Mavis. Not if you wear two pairs of socks. Oh. Look, I'll pack this. It, it, it's all in the distribution. Only me. My word. It's like Captain Scott's base camp in here, isn't it? Just come to give you the weather forecast. Scattered showers. Oh. Well, a little rain won't worry us. No, why should it? I mean, you'll be as snug as two little bugs in a rug in that tent. Oh, that reminds me. Didn't you want to uh, ask Victor about, you know? No, I didn't want to ask him anything. Must have been me wanted to ask then. Just wondering, Victor, I mean, with me not knowing anything about this camping lot, will it be um, just the one sleeping bag you'll be taking or what? Hmm? Just the one? Oh, yes. Just the one. Each, of course. Oh, you don't want to take any notice of Rita. I never do. I mean, a job's a job, and round here they like flipping gold dust. Yeah, I know that. Lately, I haven't had any course to take anybody on because of the work. But I've got a very big job in the offing, you see, and if I look on the bright side, there could be a lot more where that came from. Yeah, well, the thing is, you see, I hadn't really planned on being a plumber. Well, not as a career, you know. What had you planned on being then? Brain surgeon, airline pilot? No, I'm not taking the mickey. I mean, just look around you, weigh it up. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, you started off your own bat doing this plumbing lark in the house, didn't you? So maybe that's it. That's your, uh, you know, what your natural aptitude is. What sort of money are we talking about, Mr. Fairclough? Oh, I couldn't give you an answer off the top of my head. It'll be part of this youth employment scheme. You know, the government will give you a little bit towards your wages and all that sort of thing. It won't be wonderful, but it'll be a damn sight more than you're getting on the dole. Yeah. And after a while, if you shave, we'll see how you're doing, eh? And after about six months, you might do the thing properly, you know. A full apprenticeship. Start learning the trade from top to bottom. Or well, what do you say? Thanks very much for the offer. I really appreciate it. But I think I'd best have a word with my mum. See what she thinks. OK? All right, you have a word with whoever you like. But don't mess me around. I want a definite answer, yes or no, tomorrow. You did have your thick socks on in the shop, didn't you? Because you have to have the extra room for the double thickness, you see. Yes, I understand that, Victor. They are the right fit. And you've dubbing them, haven't you? <laughs> I did everything, just like you said. You see, your boots are your best friends, are your worst enemies. I, mean, I don't know, I mean, people make me laugh. I mean, they really do. They seem to think that you can put on a pair of old shoes and just trot off into the sunset. Yes, well, I hoped it would be like that myself. But it's a serious business, Mavis. Right, let's see you walk, then. Oh, dear. How did they feel? Well, it feels like the feet are standing in two buckets. In a few days, Mavis, they'll feel like carpet slippers. Oh, I hope you're right. Mavis, you are looking forward to this holiday, aren't you? I mean, it's going to be a wonderful experience, you know. I mean, it'll widen your horizons. You do want to go, don't you? Yes, of course I do. I'm thrilled about it. That's the girl. Believe me, when you're breathing in the purest air in the world, getting it deep into your lungs, you'll laugh at all the petty discomforts. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll help you on with your rucksack. You know, people have been trying to put me off telling me all sorts of stories about tents blowing away and creepy crawlies. <laughs> Sorry. And even snakes. Well, I just took it all in my stride. <laughs> I mean, I haven't got really snakes in this country, have we? Well, of course we have. I mean, I just laugh. We have. Three varieties, if you count the slow worm. Although that's not really a snake at all. It isn't. No, it's a legless lizard, actually. I'll teach you how to recognise them if we're lucky enough to spot them. They'll be there, but you don't always see them. <laughs> Victor, don't like snakes. They're very interesting creatures and quite harmless. Well, uh, the adder is poisonous, of course, but uh, you're quite safe if you don't attack it. I wouldn't dream of attacking an adder. Well, then you've nothing to worry about, then. Right, well, time we were making tracks for the high hills. Bye, Harriet. I'll be thinking about you. Ah, maps, yes. Compass, yes. We don't need a compass, do we? Oh, yes, absolutely vital. No signposts where we're going, you know. Oh, I suppose the snakes don't need them. Ninety and tens a pound. Thanks very much, love. Ta-da. Right. Fancy a brew? Eh? Oh, yeah, nice cup of tea. Yeah. Right. No, coffee. <laughs> hey, Deirdre, what's gone wrong with Ken? How do you mean? Well, he's a right go at me and the Rovers just now, you know. Over this disco do. 
He just feels strongly about it, you know, Ken. He takes these things seriously. Yeah, no, he seems to be having a go at me personally. Oh, no, Alf, it's nothing personal. I'm sure it's not. You know Ken. Oh, I thought I did. It seems a bit different, though. I don't know what you've been doing to him. The paper bill seems so enormous these days, especially if you let it run on for a week or two. Oh, I know, love. Do you know, we lose customers through it. They let it slide for a month, and then when they think about paying it, they're into needing a mortgage for it. And the fines they charge at the library now. I let a book get overdue a few weeks recently. I was horrified at the fine they charged oh. me. Oh, hello, hello Gail. Hello. Oh, Gail, while well, I think of it, do you want to add your signature to this petition about the new disco? You've probably heard about it. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've heard about it. I don't think I want to sign anything, though. And I'm not that bothered. And even if she was, she doesn't live all that near, does she? I shouldn't really have asked her in here, should I? Not with Len being involved in the scheme. Sorry. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Hiya. Now, then. Hiya. Hello, girl. Oh, serve Bet, I want to look for a birthday. OK. Yes, Bet. I want to get in bed for the afternoon, and I want something to take with me. Give me any magazine with no knitting patterns in it. Right. Hey, you. This will be Mavis and her friend going on the trail of the Lonesome Pine. Wait till you see her. Oh. Oh. Don't tell me, let me guess. You're the chap that sets the game for it's a knockout. No, I'm afraid not. Mavis, are you sure you've got everything? I hope you enjoy it, Mavis. I don't think it'd suit me. Oh, you'd be surprised. You get a great feeling of achievement. Should be quite an achievement getting on the bus, I think. <laughs> right, Mavis, uh, let's go and get that train for Windermere. Uh, Richard. Yes. You, you will keep an eye on Harry, won't you? Like, change your water every day. Now, don't you worry. Just enjoy yourself. Yes, and you won't forget to check a seed and... Don't worry about that budgie. She'll be warmer, drier and better fed than you will be. And the feet won't be playing her up. Maybe his feet will be fine. I'll see to that. Oh. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye, love. Bye. Bye. It's really seven-minute girl guides. No. Not sure about him, though. we want for the station. Yes, that's right. We're going the wrong way. The bus stops back there. Oh. Well, we can uh, walk to the station if you like. We could just do it if we shave. No, I think I'd rather get your bus. Yes, you're right. Save our energies for the countryside, eh? Uh, sparrow legs! Ignore it, Mavis. You get that kind of annoyance in a built-up area. Not when you're in the country. Well, not a great deal, anyway. I tried to think who they put me in mind of. Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Oh, they had horses. Of course, that's who they remind me of. Horses. <laughs> Hiya. Hi. Do I handle that? No, no, I've finished now. For the time being, anyway. Have you made your mind up? Yeah. The way I look at it is this. You'll be paying me pretty lousy money. With you only being a little bit of a firm, I could be out of my backside if anything goes wrong. And seeing that you are the only bloke who's offered me a job since I've left school. Yes, please. I'd like to work for you. Right. You're on. Let's hope neither of us regret it. When do I start? How does next Monday morning suit you? Fine. Right, be it at that past eight, OK? Right, Berkeley, shut shop up and take me for a drink. Blimey, are you here again? What are you catching this time? Hey, don't talk to him like that. You'll have me with a strike on my hands. Eh? Talk to my labour force. From next Monday morning, he's on the payroll. Are you kidding me? No, it's right. Oh, well, good luck, son. Welcome to the madhouse. And next time your boss says he can't find anything for you to do, just remind him one or two jobs won't do in at our house. OK. Yeah, Roy, the key to this place. And if you're in before me next Monday, you know what to do. Yeah, get the kettle on. See ya. Rather. Quick on the uptake, isn't he? Are you sure of what you're doing? Am I ever? I mean, you don't really know the lad. Who is he anyway? He's just a lad. What is there to know? He comes from Clarence Street. He went to Bessie Street School. He's bright enough. He's handy. You got enough work for him? Yeah. If that work comes in from Mike Baldwin's pal, yeah. And I'll tell you something else. He could have been competition. No, I know. He's just a teenage cowboy now. But that's the sort of people pay cheap when the money's tight. Let's put it this way. I'd rather have him inside the hut spitting out than outside the hut spitting in. What a revolting expression. And you've got the cleaned up version. 
You've done very well, Emily. Over 70 signatures so far. I went the whole length of Rosamond Street this afternoon. Anybody not signed this petition who wants to sign it? Have you signed it? Oh. I'm not signing. Me, me and Nelson, we're fancying on the night spot, don't we? Hey, you know what, Bald, we might give us three membership, oh, you know. Girl. Well, God help us if we get any more like you going in. It's all right for you, you don't live around here, do you? It'll be monkey music pounding in hours till midnight Aye, later. Aye, what are you getting so wet up about? Because I'm to think it'll be a damn nuisance, that's why I'll say. Aww. Hey, Ken, I've signed once, but I don't mind doing a few made-up names. <laughs> no, thanks, Ivy, we'll play it straight. We've got enough genuine opposition to the darn thing without having to invent it. Have a light tail, please, and he's paying. No, oh, let me know. Right. Now, stop moaning. If you want any tea tonight, you'll get your hand down. Bye, Air Kilda. You can charm his last eight me off him with that sweet talking way of yours. Well, I see they'll be starting tomorrow. Who? Over at the warehouse for the disco. What's this, Hilda? Who oh, doing what and when? Well, uh, I met Mike Baldwin coming out the warehouse and uh, he had this chap with him, some sort of builder. And tomorrow they're going to start ripping things out inside. Oh, I'll say one thing for Baldwin, he doesn't hang about, does he? Some would fear flaming petition, Ken. You might as well tear it up. Just a minute, they can't start converting that warehouse. The council haven't passed the planning application oh, yet. Oh. Uh, hello, time please. What's up? Hilda reckons they're starting work on that warehouse tomorrow. That's right, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, I did hear something, yes. But the council haven't approved the plans. No, well, it's just preliminary work, you know. I mean, they're just clearing things out so that they, uh, they can go ahead when the plans are passed. If they're passed. Oh, give over, Ken. It's all cut and dry, didn't it? It does look as if it's all over, bar the shouting. Oh, no, it's not. Like I say, the council still have to meet yet. And they don't know the strength of public feeling on this. Right. So, we'll just have to bring it to their attention, won't we? I'm going to call a public meeting over at the centre. Well, I'll certainly be there. Yeah, well, I just hope everybody will be there. That is, if they care enough. Well, you can count on me, Ken. And I hope our local council will be there in order to take notice at feeling. Oh, what's the use? Mike Baldwin will get his own way like he always does. Well, yes. We'll see about that. And we're back on the street tomorrow at 6.30. And don't forget, we've got a website. The address is www.gplus.co.uk. Well, coming up next here on Granada Plus, home of the hits, it's Home to Roost. Mm -hmm.